One question that issuers and investors who are further away from the day-to-day -day operations of the markets regularly ask us here at Equitas is when we see that securities prices undergo erratic and strange behaviors, what is it exactly that high-frequency traders are doing when they deploy predatory strategy? This presentation intends to give you a clear example of something that is happening in the markets every day, every minute, every second. What you see here is a typical example of what we see today on a continuous basis in the markets. You have three different marketplaces, A, B and C, exchanges, ATSs as we call them, and for each of them we see the resting orders in the book. Let's take venue A. What you see over there is some buy orders, black characters at 10, and you see a multitude of sell orders at price levels going from 10.01 to 10.05, the red characters. Light green boxes are high frequency traders, dark green boxes are long term investors. The first thing that you notice here, and which is very typical in uh, HFT uh, behaviors is that they have layered the book on the sell side. What does that mean? You see that they put lots of small orders of 100 shares in the book at different price levels. What you also see, very typical, is that the long-term investor is sitting at the end of the queue, as we call it, at the various price levels. They are not benefiting from the same speed advantage as high frequency traders and when they put their order in at a certain price level you always have a number of small orders from high frequency traders sitting ahead of them in the book. Look at for example price level 1005. The first order in the book is a high frequency trader, the second one is a high frequency trader, the third one is a high frequency trader and the last one is a long-term investor. This is important because it's one of the reasons why long-term investors in today's markets can not really sit in a book anymore and wait to be executed and avoid unnecessary intermediation. They have to become liquidity takers. And when you are a liquidity taker, you pay a fee, a fee that will lead to a rebate to high-frequency traders. Now that we have established what the markets look like, Let's take the example of a long-term investor who wants to transact. And in our example, we're going to look at a long-term investor who wants to buy 2,000 shares. When he looks at the market, he's going to notice that there is good liquidity available and that he should be able to buy 1,400 shares at 10.01, another 600 at 10.02, which would allow him to have an average price for his transaction of 10.013. When he sends in his order to the market, however, something typical happens. His order is going to hit a marketplace and he's going to take some liquidity at the prices that uh, he saw when he sent in his order, but he's also causing a signal that is going to be immediately detected by high-frequency traders. And what will those high-frequency traders then do? A number of things. One, they will start cancelling a lot of their orders. And you can see that happening in this example. Two, they will buy orders. They will buy shares. They will buy some of the small long-term investor orders that are in there. They will buy orders from themselves. But buy just to compensate what they are selling to that incoming order from the long-term investor who will be trading at ever higher prices going through that layered book. As soon as the long-term investor uh, 2,000 shares are, are filled and what we see a book moving to a much higher price, uh, the book now shows a bid and ask of 10.04, 10.05 HFTs come back in with a wave of buy orders and what they are doing is layering the book again, this time on the buy side, so they are ready to do exactly the same again when a sell order comes in. This is a very typical example of high frequency trading 
And what you see is that it's truly a combination of active strategies and passive strategies where they combine a multitude of transactions to impose at the end of the day what I would call a tax on the long-term investor. You will also notice one last element that is that there is one long-term investor looking to sell 1200 shares. He's still there, he's still sitting there because the high-frequency traders will not push the price higher by taking his liquidity out because that would not allow them to be successful. And he is in that typical situation of a long-term investor that rests an order in the book and doesn't get executed. His only choice to get executed at one moment is to become a liquidity taker. The example we just saw is a typical example of technological front-running. Let's now look at what specifically happened to the various stakeholders in this example. The investor bought his 2,000 shares, but he bought them at 10.02.75 rather than the 10.03.13 that he was expecting based on the liquidity that was in the books when he entered his order. The high-frequency traders, they cancelled 2,000 shares, they bought 1,300 at 10.02.08, they sold 1,300 at 10.02.69, in other words, their position at the end of a transaction is flat, no risk, and they made a profit on this transaction of 7.58. 7.58 is combining the spread gains and the rebates. Now you may say 7.58, that is not very meaningful, but then you need to multiply it by the tens of thousands of times that this type of phenomenon takes place in the Canadian marketplace, and you will understand that this is a very significant tax on long-term investors. The consequences of this type of strategy are further amplified by the fact that high-frequency traders all show similar behaviors. And you can imagine that this has an impact on investor confidence. But it also has an impact on market makers. Market makers who would be sitting in that book would be overrun by the high-frequency traders, it makes issuers feel very uncomfortable as they observe unexplainable price volatility in their stock, and it's a big tax on the dealer community because the dealer representing the long-term investor is the one that needs to pay the fees every time the long-term investor takes liquidity. Statistical facts are clearly corroborating what we have seen in the example. On the top right side of this slide, you can see two graphs. One is showing over time the evolution of the bid and ask spreads in the 500 most actively traded securities in Canada, and this over a period of about 15 years. And we see, indeed, that the spread, as it is presented in the market, has become narrower than ever. The bottom part of that same diagram, however, shows you the evolution of, for the same securities and over that same time frame of intraday price volatility. In other words, how much is the price of those securities fluctuating during the day? And we see that this is at a historical high. Think back of our example, continuously the price jumps up, jumps down, and you can imagine who is always on the right side of the transaction. The spreads that we see are not real spreads at which you can trade. They are spreads that are there to attract investors and then to impose a tax on them. Another statistic that is quite interesting to look at is the amount of time that orders are resting in the books today. The statistic at the bottom of this slide shows you how many orders stay in the books for how long across all Canadian marketplaces. Some interesting facts. 90% of all the orders entered into a marketplace today here in Canada stay active for less than a minute. 50% stay active for less than a second. 
20% stay active for less than 10 milliseconds. These are not long-term investors seeking to get access to liquidity. These are not market makers providing liquidity. These are high-frequency traders deploying predatory strategies. The markets today are tilted in favor of high-frequency traders and the marketplaces themselves. They found in each other a partnership that is beneficial to maximizing their profit. The issue with that is that it's being done to the detriment of the other stakeholders, the issuers, the investors, the traditional market makers and the broker dealers. Equitas intent is not to ban high frequency trading. We think that the good strategies that high frequency traders deploy can be very beneficial to a market. But what we want to do is to curb the predatory strategies that high frequency traders deploy and which were demonstrated in the example we looked at earlier. Our objective at Equitas is to re-establish a balanced playing field. What we want at Equitas is to establish an exchange that is putting the investors and the issuers first again. An exchange that also acknowledges the critical role of market makers and traditional dealers. We want our trading environment to be an environment where liquidity is reliable, where unnecessary intermediation is eliminated, where predatory high-frequency strategies are curbed. How will we walk our talk? Three answers to that. One, our ownership structure has no prevalent owner. Every owner in Equitas today has a stake that is between 10 and 15 percent. Two, our main constituency, our largest group of shareholders, is buy-side firms. And they are in Equitas because they see this as a vehicle that can bring the choice in the market that the markets need to become better. Three, before we will start operating Equitas, we will reopen our ownership and we will invite all issuers, investors and dealers who wish so to join into our ownership and have bought representation. What we are doing over there is nothing else but remutualizing the exchange business because we believe that for an exchange to provide the right service to the industry its ownership must be aligned with its users.